First Peter chapter number five. First Peter chapter number five. And I'm going to read just one scripture in the book of Psalms, the 30th number of Psalms, Psalms 30. But we'll first begin in 1 Peter chapter number 5, beginning at verse number 6, as Peter has written according to inspiration from the Holy Ghost. First Peter 5 and 6 begins as follows. Humble yourselves, therefore under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same affliction are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. But the God of all grace who have called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus after after that ye have suffered a while <laughs> shall make you perfect establish strengthen and settle you to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Now I just want to read one verse in Psalms 30. In Psalms 30, if you would look with me at verse number 5. It says, for his anger endureth but a moment. In his favor is life. So weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Look at your neighbor like, like something wrong with you and just tell them. Tell them. It's going to be on. After I dry my eyes, I'm not going to be crying always. You might want to take a picture of me right now because this is about the saddest you're going to ever see me as long as you live. Take a picture because this is the brokest I'm going to ever be. You, you'll never see me hurting. Matter of fact, by the next time you see me, Come Sunday, you may not recognize me because when I finish crying, let's tell somebody something's getting ready to happen. Something is getting ready to happen in my life. Uh, we, 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 look at, we look at 1 Peter chapter 5 and we see uh, the Apostle Peter pen these words and and I want you to realize the place that these words are coming from, which we know that all scripture is inspired by the Holy Ghost. So definitely not, 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 not ignoring that. But I want you to understand the experiences that he's went through to come to this place of wisdom. Uh, when Peter shows up on the scene, you know, he was just a little hot-headed sailor. You know, he, I think that's maybe... What a term come from cussing like a sailor, cuss. Peter could cuss. He could cuss real, real good. He could get you told. And maybe you gotta be in the country to know that. Get them told mean uh, they understand now. Whatever they didn't understand before. If you got some understanding, that means I got them told. So, so next, next time, just tell them, don't worry about them, girl. I got them told. Uh, it matters not how many times I failed before. 
the moment I turned it over to him, what didn't work will work. You're not hearing me. You look at the same Peter he just prayed and say, get behind me, Satan. Because Peter was so gung-ho in his approach to ministry and being a disciple. And, and you got to understand, he had a great characteristic, but at the same time, your greatest strength is also your biggest weakness. I need to say that again. Somebody missed it. Your greatest strength is also your greatest weakness. If you don't learn how to balance it. See, your strength may be that you're so determined and you're so gung-ho and you're so bold that you won't back down for anything. And once you make your mind up to do something, you're going to do it and no one can stop you. That's a great strength when you're right. But it's a horrible weakness when you're going the wrong way because nobody can stop you. And, 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 and Peter, and, and Jesus had to correct him, but let me get to the good part. And one day Peter was with Jesus, and Jesus told him, he said, Peter, Satan desires to sift you as wheat. But I've prayed for you, Peter, and I pray that your faith fail not. And then, and then Peter receives that word, and, and he goes on, but I don't think he really believed it. Like Satan came fool with me. Satan, you know, Peter was very very almost arrogant in this approach because Jesus told him on another day he said, he said, listen, listen, because he was telling him what was going to happen and you know, and how he'd be betrayed and so on and so forth and Peter goes on to say, Lord i never leave you i die with you, i never walk out, he said, Peter, listen, I understand you feel that way, but before the cock crowed twice tonight you will have denied me three times Peter says, never will I deny you I'll never do a thing like that. And the time goes on that after Peter, after Jesus is betrayed, and they begin to see Peter and question him. Oh, 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 aren't you one of them? And Peter says, no, I don't know that man. Y'all beating, and that man that y'all beating up and persecuting and ridiculing and beating to death and you're about to crucify him. I don't know him. And then another one comes and says, yeah, 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 you look like, I think you were with him. Well, aren't you one of them? He said, no, I told you, I'm not one of them. And then a lady comes up and says, yeah, you're one of them. Your speech betrays you. Peter said, oh, it's my speech? Well, let me tell you a cotton picking blah, 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 blah. And he gives some words that says, would Jesus say this? And if it's my speech that's betraying me, and he begins to curse that he doesn't know him. And, and he denies Jesus. Watch this. And at, as soon as he denies him, he hears the cock crow twice. And he realized, I just denied that I even knew him after all he did for me thrice. And then Jesus looks at him. And he looks at Jesus. And he feels like a failure. He feels like his life is over. I don't know if you've ever let God down before. But I know what it feels like to do something that makes you ashamed to call yourself his child. Peter was so ashamed and embarrassed that I would deny the one that saved me. I would let down the one that set me free, the one that gave me an identity, the one that changed my life. Peter was embarrassed. But in, the, in, the, in doing so, Jesus was resurrected after being crucified on the third day. And he gives the message to the women and he said, I want you to go and tell my disciples and Peter that I've resurrected and tell him to meet me here. And, and it, it, it is very important to note that he called his disciples generally, but he called Peter out by name. Because I know Peter thinks it's too late. He thinks his life is over. He thinks he's ashamed me so bad that I would never want anything to do with him. I know Peter wants to give up. Because I heard he's already went back to fishing and he stopped preaching the gospel. He's walked away from the ministry because of what he did. Yeah, you're not hearing me. I've heard a man of God say years ago, 
and it's so true, I hate to say it. He says, Satan has found out something. That all I got to do is get the saints down. If I can knock the child of God down, the other saints will hold them there for me. Sad to say, oftentimes the hardest place to get back on your feet is in the church. Because you can fall and be so ashamed and you're already hearing what the people are saying. Even though you haven't heard what they said. In your mind, you can hear the conversations and out of embarrassment, you will just walk away from God because you feel like you're such a poor representation of God. But if the truth be told, the very people that you're embarrassed by got some skeletons to yeah. If the truth be told, and here it is, here it is, here it is, Peter feeling so embarrassed and so ashamed, and Jesus calls for him by name because he knows he yet has a purpose for him. Realize this, Peter's failure didn't alter his purpose. I wish I had time to preach that. His failure didn't alter his purpose. But while he was crying and living in self-pity and all of this, but you know the one thing his failure did do? It humbled him. <laughs> you don't understand. What he thought was the end, God knew was just the beginning. Because I finally got him right where I need him to be. So I can truly use him for my glory. And Peter, having experienced that, he writes these words. And he says, you need to humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. Because he realized, if you don't humble yourself, life will humble you. See, you've only got two options. You can humble yourself or life will do it for you. Because he that exalts himself shall be brought down low. But he that humbles himself shall be exalted. So the way up is really down. You're not hearing me. You're not hearing me. The way up is not arrogance. The way up is humility. See, the way God, 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 see, the challenge becomes the higher he takes you, the lower you must become. The way you stay up is to stay low. You're not hearing me. You're not hearing me. You're not hearing me. And then he tells Peter this and, and Peter learns this lesson and Peter says now, and you've got to cast every care upon him because he cares for you. Peter says, I, I tried to fix it all myself thinking that I was the answer to my own problems. I thought it was all about me until I realized what, it, what even the things I did didn't embarrass me. They didn't embarrass him because he knew when, where, and with who I was going to do it before I ever did it. And God chose me knowing how I would miss it. You're not hearing me. So my job is to get back on track. You're not hearing me. There's no way you can go that's away from the hand of God. You're not hearing me. See, God puts in you. Nothing that you do can change your destination. Watch this. Before